Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. In the heart of the Appalachian wilderness, far from the well-trodden paths of day hikers and nature enthusiasts, lay the secluded Lake Hollow. Surrounded by dense forests and rugged terrain, it was a place few ventured to and even fewer knew about. Rumors circulated in the nearest town about strange happenings near the lake, disappearances, eerie lights at night, and inexplicable sounds that echoed through the trees like whispers on the wind. These tales, however, only served to pique the curiosity of a group of college friends looking for one last adventurous camping trip before graduating. The group consisted of five friends, Jack, the de facto leader, Sarah, who loved ghost stories, Derek, the skeptic, Emily, the planner, and Noah, who was always up for a challenge. They packed their gear, excited for a weekend of wilderness, campfires, and stargazing, oblivious to the warnings from locals about avoiding the lake after sunset. They arrived late in the afternoon, the sun dipping low behind the mountains as they set up camp on the southern edge of Lake Hollow. The lake itself was serene, its surface perfectly mirroring the orange and purple hues of the sky. The beauty of it made it hard to believe any of the ominous stories could be true. As night fell, the group gathered around the campfire, the crackling flames casting flickering shadows across their faces. Sarah, unable to resist the setting, began recounting the tales she had heard in town. She spoke of a creature that was said to dwell in the depths of Lake Hollow, a remnant of a time long forgotten, which would surface under the cover of darkness to wander the woods. Derek laughed, dismissing the stories as nothing more than local folklore meant to scare tourists. Emily, always prepared, had brought along a book on local legends and found the story Sarah mentioned. According to the book, the creature was known as the Hollow Wraith, a guardian of the lake, disturbed by the presence of those who dared to trespass its shores at night. Intrigued and a bit unnerved, they agreed on a midnight hike around the lake. The idea was met with mixed feelings, but the thrill of a potential scare outweighed their apprehension. They set off with flashlights and cameras, the moon providing a silver path across the water. As they made their way around the northern edge of the lake, the woods seemed to close in around them. The usual sounds of night creatures were oddly absent, replaced by a heavy silence that seemed to throb in their ears. Noah, trying to lighten the mood, joked about calling out to the hollow wraith. Before anyone could stop him, he shouted into the darkness, Come out, come out, wherever you are. The words had barely left his lips when an unsettling splash echoed across the lake, followed by a low, mournful howl that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. The group froze, their hearts pounding as a thick fog began to roll across the lake, enveloping them in damp, cold air. Terrified but too intrigued to turn back, they continued their trek. The fog grew denser, their flashlights barely cutting through the murk. Suddenly, Emily, who was leading, stopped short. In the beam of her flashlight, partially obscured by the fog, was a figure standing at the water's edge. It was too far to see clearly, but it seemed unnaturally tall, its limbs distorted and elongated. The figure slowly turned towards them, its movements jerky and unnatural. As it stepped into the light, its eyes caught the glow from Emily's flashlight, reflecting back a deep, malevolent red. Frozen in fear, the group watched as the figure moved closer, the details of its form becoming more terrifying with each step. It was then they realized that the midnight hike might have been a grave mistake. As the creature advanced, they knew they had to make a choice. Run or face the wrath of the Hollow Wraith. The story of their night at Lake Hollow was far from over, the true horror yet to unfold as they stood on the brink of the unknown. The group's initial paralysis shattered as the creature let out a piercing shriek, a sound so unnatural it seemed to vibrate through their very bones. Instinct took over. Jack yelled, Run back to the camp! And without a second thought, they turned and sprinted away from the looming figure, their breaths ragged with panic. The dense fog made their escape disorienting. Branches snagged at their clothes and skin as they pushed through the underbrush, the sounds of the creature's ghastly wails spurring them on. They could hear it moving through the woods parallel to their path, branches snapping under its weight, its breaths heavy in the cold air. As they neared the campsite, the fog began to thin allowing them faint glimpses of their tents through the trees. 
They burst into the clearing, and without stopping to grab their gear, they continued toward their parked SUV. Noah fumbled with the keys, his hands shaking uncontrollably as the rest piled in, shouting for him to hurry. Just as they slammed the doors shut, the creature emerged from the woods, its form more horrifying up close. It stood over seven feet tall, its skin a ghastly pale that seemed almost translucent in the dim light. Its eyes, red and unblinking, fixated on them as it approached the vehicle. Jack screamed, Drive! As Noah finally turned the ignition, the engine roaring to life. They peeled away from the campsite, the SUV's headlights cutting through the darkness and fog. The creature gave chase for a few yards, its speed astonishing before they left it behind, its screams echoing in the night. They drove in silence, each one processing the terror they had escaped. The road seemed endless, winding through the woods that now felt malevolent and alive. After what felt like hours, they reached the main road, the first signs of civilization bringing them a meager sense of relief. But as they neared the town, an unsettling realization settled over them. The creature had not just been guarding the lake, it was a sentinel, a warning of the dangers of encroaching on untouched nature. They had ignored the warnings, and now they felt the weight of their intrusion, a palpable guilt mixed with their lingering terror. The group agreed to never speak of what happened, to try to forget the horrors of Lake Hollow. But such experiences do not fade quietly. Nightmares plagued them, each dreaming of red eyes in the dark, of whales in the woods, and of fog that hid unspeakable horrors. The creature had marked them in some indescribable way, a reminder that some places on Earth are meant to remain wild, undisturbed by human presence. Years later, the stories of Lake Hollow continue. New tales emerged, whispers of the foolish who dare to venture near the lake, only to disappear without a trace. And always, there are reports of a strange fog that rolls over the lake at night, hiding the guardian of its depths, waiting for the next intruders to ignore the legends and step into its domain. The story of Lake Hollow remains open, a chilling testament to the mysteries that lurk in the heart of untouched nature. In the secluded reaches of the Pacific Northwest, a dense fog perennially shrouded the old growth forests of Cedar Grove. The remote campsite, seldom visited due to its infamous and somewhat menacing reputation, was exactly the type of challenge that Drew and his college friends, Lauren and Miguel, sought for their weekend getaway. They wanted isolation, a true break from civilization, and Cedar Grove promised just that, with an added hint of adventure stemming from local folklore. The legend told of the whisperers, formless entities said to roam the woods, their presence often marked by a sudden chill and the soft, unintelligible mutterings just beyond the range of human hearing. Locals advised never to follow the voices, for they led unwary travelers deeper into the woods from which no return was possible. The trio, skeptics to the core, laughed off these stories, attributing them to the overactive imaginations of townsfolk. Upon their arrival, the forest greeted them with an eerie silence, the thick fog muting both sight and sound. They set up camp near a clearing, the mossy ground soft underfoot, the air crisp and cold. As night fell, they gathered around the campfire, the crackling flames a small beacon of warmth and light in the oppressive fog. Drew decided to record their experience on his handheld camera, hoping to capture the essence of Cedar Grove's haunting beauty. As he panned the camera around the darkening woods, a slight movement caught his eye, something just at the edge of the light's reach. But when he focused, there was nothing but the dense trees and the slow dance of the fog. As the night deepened, the trio settled into their tents, the fatigue of the hike weighing heavy on their eyelids. But sleep did not come easily. The silence of the forest was unnerving, and the thick fog seemed to press against the fabric of the tents with almost a palpable weight. Sometime past midnight, Lauren awoke to a whisper. Disoriented, she first thought it was one of her friends, but a quick glance showed Drew and Miguel sleeping soundly in their tent. The whispering continued, a soft, sibilant sound that seemed to come from all around her. It beckoned, gentle and persuasive. Despite the warnings, curiosity pricked at her, the sound too coherent now, forming words she almost understood. She stepped out of the tent, the cold air biting at her skin, the campfire now nothing but smoldering embers. The fog had thickened, visibility reduced to mere feet ahead. 
The whispers grew louder, more insistent. Come, they seemed to say, follow. Compelled, Lauren walked towards the source of the whispers, each step taking her further from the camp and deeper into the fog-shrouded woods. Behind her, the faintest sounds of her camp and sleeping friends grew distant, swallowed by the fog. Back at the camp, Drew awoke to find the flap of Lauren's tent open, the interior empty. Panic set in as he called out for her, his voice loud against the quiet of the night. Miguel joined him, and together they grabbed flashlights, their beams weak in the thick fog, as they ventured out to find her. As they searched, calling Lauren's name, a deep unease settled over them. The woods felt alive, watching and whispering. The legend of the whisperers clawed at the back of their minds, no longer just a tale to scoff at, but a pressing, terrifying possibility. Suddenly, Miguel's flashlight beam caught a glimpse of something, a figure in the distance, barely visible through the fog. It was Lauren, or so it seemed, standing still, her back to them. They called out to her, relief flooding through them. But as they approached, the figure seemed to dissolve into the mist, leaving them with nothing but the echo of their own calls. Drew and Miguel stopped, the realization hitting them with chilling clarity. The forest had them now, its whispers weaving around them like threads of fate, pulling them deeper into its heart, where the shadows moved of their own accord, and the fog whispered secrets meant only for the lost. The story of their night in Cedar Grove was far from over, its final chapters yet to be written in the whispering dark. The panic that gripped Drew and Miguel turned into a suffocating dread as they realized Lauren was not the one they had seen. They stood frozen, straining to hear anything beyond the whispers. Each murmur in the fog felt like a cold finger trailing down their spines. Clinging to each other for any semblance of comfort, they knew they had to make a choice. Find Lauren and escape, or succumb to the same fate that seemed to have claimed her. Drew, with a shaky hand, raised his camera, using the night vision setting to pierce through the oppressive darkness. The digital screen flickered as he scanned the area, the fog appeared as a swirling mass in the viewfinder, and for a moment, everything was still. Too still. Then, abruptly, the screen showed a figure standing mere feet from them. It was Lauren, or at least her shape, motionless and silent, facing away. They called out, rushing towards the image, but as they reached where it stood, the figure vanished, leaving them clutching at the mist. Desperation set in as they realized the whispers were leading them in circles. The fog seemed to warp their sense of direction, each turn and step guided by unseen forces. They stumbled upon a clearing they didn't recognize, the ground soggy and uneven beneath their feet. The fog here was thinner, allowing them a few more feet of visibility. In the center of the clearing was an old, gnarled tree, its branches bare and stretched out like twisted hands reaching for the sky. As they approached the tree, the whispers grew to a cacophony, drowning out all other sounds. Hanging from the branches, like macabre ornaments, were small objects wrapped in tattered cloth. As Miguel reached out to examine one, the cloth unraveled, revealing a small, crudely made doll with features eerily reminiscent of Lauren. Horrified, they realized each doll represented someone. Campers, hikers, locals, perhaps all those who had disappeared in these woods. The tree was a monument to the lost, each doll a silent sentinel of their fate. Suddenly, the ground beneath the tree stirred. The soil shifted as if something buried deep was awakening. Roots twisted and groaned, pulling back to reveal a dark, gaping hole at the base of the tree. From within, a cold wind emanated, carrying a stench of decay and the unmistakable sound of a low, sorrowful moan. Drew, unable to move, kept the camera pointed at the hole, the recording light blinking steadily in the chaos. As they watched, frozen in terror, a figure slowly emerged from the darkness below the tree. It was not Lauren. It was something other. A creature born of shadow and malice. Its eyes hollow. Its mouth an endless void of whispers. The creature moved toward them, its form shifting and twisting in the fog, never quite solid, but undeniably present. Drew and Miguel turned to run, but the forest around them had closed in, the trees now barriers to their escape. The last scenes recorded on Drew's camera were shaky, frantic glimpses of their flight through the woods, the whispers now deafening screams, 
The creatures form a constant presence just behind them. The camera caught one final image of Drew's face. Pale, terrified, a silent scream etched across his features before it fell to the ground, the feed dissolving into static. The camera was later found by a search party, led to the spot by the sound of its still running recording. Drew, Miguel, and Lauren were never found. The whispers of Cedar Grove continued, a haunting melody in the wind, drawing the curious and the brave into its depths, where the fog waits patiently, and the whisperers are always hungry for more. Deep in the heart of the Blackwood Forest, a group of old college friends reunited for what they expected to be an adventurous, albeit peaceful, weekend camping trip. The forest, known for its lush, sprawling wilderness and the pristine Blackwood Lake, seemed the perfect escape from their busy urban lives. However, the forest was also shrouded in whispered legends about the Night Walkers, shadowy figures said to roam the forest depths after sundown, drawn to the warmth and life of human souls. The group consisting of Eric, the natural leader, Melissa, the skeptic, Hannah, who had a penchant for supernatural stories, and Dan, the ever-cautious planner, set up their campsite near the edge of Blackwood Lake. As they pitched their tents and gathered wood for the fire, the forest around them buzzed with the sounds of wildlife, the rustling leaves, and the gentle lapping of the lake's water against the shore. With the campsite prepared, they sat around the newly kindled fire as dusk began to creep across the sky, painting it in shades of deep purple and orange. As the stars began to prick the night sky, Hannah couldn't resist sharing the tales of the night walkers she had read about in an old local's blog. According to the stories, these ethereal beings were once humans who had gotten lost in the woods, their spirits now eternally wandering, envious of the living and yearning for the warmth they once knew. The group chuckled nervously, unease hidden beneath their laughter. Eric, looking to lighten the mood, suggested a nighttime swim in Blackwood Lake. The idea was met with mixed feelings, but the allure of the cool water on a warm night was tempting. They grabbed their flashlights and made their way to the lake, the beams cutting through the growing darkness. As they swam, the water felt unnervingly deep and dark, the lake's surface reflecting the moonlight in eerie, dancing patterns. Melissa, floating on her back, stared up at the stars when she thought she saw a shadow pass over the moon. Sitting up abruptly, she scanned the tree line around the lake. The trees seemed to loom closer than before, their branches swaying gently in a non-existent breeze. Feeling suddenly chilled, Melissa called out to the others that she was heading back to the camp. The others, feeling the night's chill creeping into their bones as well, agreed and followed her out of the water. As they dried off and dressed, Dan noticed that their fire, which had been roaring when they left, was now just a smoldering pile of embers. Puzzled, he mentioned it to the group, but they dismissed it as the wind picking up while they were away. Back around the dying fire, Eric worked to revive the flames. As the fire crackled back to life, casting a warm glow around the campsite, the group settled into their chairs, wrapped in towels and blankets. That's when they heard it, a soft, whisper-like rustling that seemed to circle the camp. Thinking it was just an animal, Dan shone his flashlight into the woods. The light flickered, then steadied, and for a brief moment, it illuminated a figure standing just beyond the trees. It was too far to see clearly, but it seemed unnaturally tall, its limbs too long, its posture oddly hunched. The light flickered again, and when it steadied, the figure was gone. Unease settled heavily on the group. They gathered closer to the fire, the comfort of the light and warmth a stark contrast to the darkness beyond. As the night deepened, the rustling returned, now accompanied by a low, mournful moan that seemed both far away and uncomfortably close. As fear began to take hold, the group decided to keep the fire burning bright, hoping it would ward off whatever was lurking in the darkness. But as they piled on more wood, the realization dawned on them that they were not alone in Blackwood Forest. And as the fire blazed higher, Casting long shadows around their camp, they prepared themselves for a night of vigilance, uncertain of what the dark woods held. The story of their night in Blackwood Forest was far from over, and as they sat huddled together, watching the shadows for any sign of movement, they understood that the legends of the Night Walkers might be more than just stories. As the hours crawled by, each snap of a twig or whisper of the wind tightened the knot of anxiety among the friends. Their conversations, 
initially filled with attempts to rationalize their fears, gradually gave way to oppressive silence. Every rustling leaf or distant splash became a signal of unseen watchers just beyond the firelight. Hannah, whose fascination with the supernatural had brought them the tale of the Night Walkers, was the first to break the silence. We should never have come here, she whispered, her voice quivering. The reality of their situation was setting in. This was not just a ghost story shared around a campfire. It was becoming their reality. Dan tried to keep a level head, focusing on practical measures. Let's keep the fire high and stay close. Dawn isn't far off and we can make our way back as soon as the first light comes through. Despite Dan's assurances, an unspoken dread hung over them that the night had more in store. They added more wood to the fire, the flames casting eerie shadows that danced across the trees in their own faces, distorting their expressions into ghoulish masks. Suddenly, Melissa, who had been staring into the darkness beyond the fire, stood abruptly. Do you hear that? She asked, tilting her head slightly, straining to hear more clearly. The others listened intently, and soon a faint melodious humming reached their ears. It was a soft, haunting tune that seemed both beautiful and terrifying in its sadness. The melody grew louder, weaving through the trees like a siren's call. It was almost hypnotic, drawing their gaze towards the forest's edge where the shadows seemed to deepen and swirl. Don't listen to it! Eric warned, his voice harsh with fear. Remember the stories. Nightwalkers lure you away. Stay here. Stay in the light. Despite his warning, the haunting melody tugged at their minds, tempting them with its sorrowful beauty. It spoke of lost loves, ancient woes, and the deep, unyielding loneliness of eternity. One by one, despite their better judgment, they found themselves drawn towards the source of the sound, each step taking them further from the safety of the firelight. As they approached the forest's edge, the temperature dropped sharply. The ground beneath their feet grew marshy, sucking at their shoes with each step. The trees here were older, their massive trunks gnarled and twisted, their branches hanging low like the weary arms of the world weary. The music led them to a small clearing where the fog was thicker, swirling around a figure that stood in the center. It was a silhouette, indistinct, yet unmistakably human in shape. As they drew closer, the figure turned slowly, and they could see it was a woman, her face pale and eyes hollow, her mouth open as she sang her eerie song. Her gaze locked onto theirs, filled with an ancient grief that pierced their hearts. Then, around her, more shapes began to materialize from the fog, dozens of figures all standing silently, their eyes empty, their own stories of sorrow written upon their ghostly faces. The realization hit them with chilling clarity. They had walked into the heart of the Nightwalker's domain, lured by the song meant to ensnare the unwary. The campfire was now just a distant glow behind them, its warmth a faint memory against the cold embrace of the fog. As they turned to find their way back, they found their path blocked by more shadowy figures emerging from the trees. The song grew louder, the melody now a cacophony that filled the air, drowning out all thoughts of escape. Trapped and overwhelmed by the haunting presence of the Nightwalkers, the friends huddled together, their fear complete as the figures closed in around them. The last thing they saw before the fog enveloped them completely was the sorrowful face of the singing woman, her song a lament for the living and a welcome to the lost. In the heart of Blackwood Forest, the legends were alive, and they were hungry for new tales to tell. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video.